<laughs> Hi everyone, how you doing? Uh, happy, happy Wednesday. Um, we've got Alex today filming because Drew started his job um, today, which is, <laughs> he's working from home because it's all training online for the first couple of days. And um, the builders started work. So if you hear a lot of noise, I do apologize. That's the builders. So the builders started the work and in the middle of his training, this big important, you know, presentation thing, they turned the electric off. He wasn't happy. So poor Drew is a little bit stressed today, but uh, got it sorted luckily. So Alex is filming for us. Um, hopefully you're all okay. Hopefully you're all enjoying your days. Uh, we're gonna do day two of um, Advent calendar. So we'll do that in a second. We just wanted to go through a couple of things with you first. Um, all the wool that you saw um, Sarah do the what's in the box yesterday that's now all on the website so if you're looking for wools there's some beautiful super chunkies chunkies double knits all sorts they've all gone on the website um i've also put about 30 items into the ready-made section this morning as well so there's a load more gone into the ready-made section so if you're looking for little christmas presents little and you haven't got time to make it there's ready-made stuff there as well so there's that and then there's this so we're in a bit of a sort out in the shop, a bit of a deep clean and a proper sort out. Uh, and we forgot we had these. I, don't, um, I know Sarah's done a one o'clock on these little prairie stars, which are the little hanging ornaments. So that's a Christmas one. And then you can do them non-Christmas as well. I think they're really, really pretty. We've got um, what, one, two, three, four. We've only got six, six of these kits left. Sarah's going to put them on the, um, on the website. They're not Christmas ones. They're non-Christmas ones. Um, but we found these, which I don't think are on the website. There's a, a variety of colours. It is a pick and mix. So instead of, they're normally £5 a kit, I'm going to do them at £4 a kit. But you've got everything in there. You've got your pattern, you've got your padded, um, what's the word? Padded cushion bit in there. And all your pre-cut squares, five inch squares in there, which is enough to do it. So I'll do them at £4 and there's six left. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven left so I think Sarah was going to put those on this afternoon for me um, at four quid so I thought we'll just show you those ones just because we we found them we found them literally buried at the back of the shelf we're like how have they got there so advent time let's do day two so we're going to open up day two's envelope first and see what's in here so I don't know if you want to come into here let's see what's on day number two um, oh, sorry, I think what's I'll do it. I'll just turn the uh, TV down. So day number two's prize is um, a Moda Love is, Love is Patient panel. This is a really big panel. It's really beautiful as well, actually. We'll put photos of each item on Facebook um, after the fact, okay? So, Al, I'm going to give it a good shake up, a good swirl and a shake. Toss, ooh, put that one back in. There we go. Give it a good shake like that and then I'll get in there and have a good rummage and pull one out for me. Okay, got one? Go. Okay, so it is, oh, because of Do phone you... numbers, darling. Ah. Okay, so yeah, I didn't luckily that one hasn't on got there. phone number on it, but some of them have, so we can't show, show that just in case. So it's pink 189 and the winner, as Alex was showing you, is Jean Baker. So well done, Jean. This panel is on its way to you. So we'll get that in the post. We've got your we've got your address, lovely. So we'll get that in the post to you later. Uh, I think that panel uh, they retail it like forty five quid. That those panels, it's a it's a big beautiful panel. So um, so that one's yours. Um, and then Sarah will do one tomorrow for day three, and we'll keep going right the way through to Christmas Eve. So who's there? Who's saying hello, Alex? We got Jean, uh, Wendy, Catherine, Linda, Carolyn, Taryn. A lot of people are oh lovely people. hi everybody and congratulations Jean well done <laughs> I'll just slip my water we're gonna I'm going from this straight into a um into a zoom class as well so uh so yeah it's gonna be uh it's a busy old afternoon busy old afternoon and it's my Tom Tiz birthday as well my youngest he's 14 today it's not so little anymore um so oh, sounds like they've gone on lunch break it's very quiet I'm hoping that means they've gone on a lunch break. <laughs> Should see state my own suite though. There's nothing left of it. They've had, ripped everything out. All the tiles are already off the wall. Then we started at State this morning. Right. Okay. So I thought we'd have a little go at this one today. So this is a folded pinwheel block. 
you might have had tried this one before but i quite liked it because it's quite 3d um i quite like the idea that you know it's all um it's all sort of 3d but you could use it in a, just as a normal quilt anyway um you could also if you didn't want it to be quite as 3d you could you know top stitch into these or when you're quilting them you could quilt them to put them down if you didn't want them to be 3d but i quite liked this i thought it was quite a nice little method um it's not something that i'd particularly played around with before but i thought why not let's have a little go you do want to iron seams open on this one though so again i'm using up the end of layer cakes because you know might as well <laughs> um you this can be done in any size squares as long as the squares are the same size this works okay so it doesn't matter if you were using two and a half inch squares five inch squares ten inch squares you know 18 inch squares doesn't matter as long as your, your squares are the same and for each little block you're going to need four background fabrics and four of your coloured fabrics again i'm using up christmas fabrics but this i think this would be beautiful for like you know um because they look like windmills don't they you know you used to blow when you were a kid you could do them in really bright beautiful colours be really pretty so i've got four of my background fabrics one two three and four and four of my coloured fabrics but again like i was saying any fabric at all use your scraps it'd be a lovely scrappy quilt it doesn't have to be all the same on the background you know these don't have to be all white they could be like alternating colours or something have a play with it it's just a, a new technique for you so got four of my background squares like that and then four of these first thing we want to do with these is fold them in half so I'm just going to pull the little iron board over and while I iron them in half diagonally talk to me ladies who's there anyone saying hello Alex anybody there uh, Andy said Tom 14 my how, uh, my how time has flown indeed indeed he is he's 14 today bless him <laughs> uh, and yeah. taller than me now is he yeah he is he's nice. just taller than me now <laughs> Hmm. I'm only short, remember? So I've got heels on most of the time. <laughs> oh, okay, no, that's hmm. Anybody else there having a chat? Uh, Catherine says, sitting in front of a fire and enjoy enjoying your daily chat. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, my, my, my name drivel, my waffling on, but yeah, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Glad I'm uh, entertaining somebody. <laughs> Here we go. So, just folded all these in half diagonally and folded them nice nice and you know give it a really crisp iron and um, you could put a little we are going to use some starch savvy later but you could starch savvy them or just starch them you know whatever whichever brand you use okay and this these are really incredibly simple you're going to be like well oh, i'm going to be done i think by about quarter past <laughs> so i'm going to try and do these towards you they all go the same way so each one is exactly the same so we're going to put this down like that and line it up in the bottom right hand corner and then you're going to take the top right and fold that down to the bottom I like that and then pin it into place okay so I'm going to pin that into place there like that and we're going to do the same on all four okay so they all look exactly the same so bottom right corner like that okay line it up and then fold top right down to bottom right like that if you wanted them to alternate you would do it the other way so if you wanted to do one block all bottom right like this but if you wanted the next one to spin the other way you would do them bottom left and fold down okay but we're going to do bottom right on all of these ones there we go so fold that down like that pop a pin in i'm going to do that for all four anybody else there having a chat while i'm just doing this little bit of Bit of pinning uh pamela said uh, hi not seen this before must give it a go oh hi pamela yeah i it I, i've seen the technique but never actually had a go at it before so it's a nice excuse to have a little play that's a nice thing for me the the wednesdays the block of the weeks it gives me an excuse to have a lot of play with lots of little techniques in a <laughs> different block patterns that i wouldn't normally get time to play around with anybody else there uh claire said uh Hi everyone, Wild and Jean feels like ages since I've made a live session. Oh bless you, yeah, it's uh, it's 
trying to catch them, isn't it? Where you know, life is busy. It's Christmas. Everybody's gone a bit crazy. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to stitch down just this edge here, and you want to stitch down about an eighth of an inch. Okay, you're just basically tacking it into place. Um, I'm going to up my stitch length just a little bit, up to about three and a half, and I'm going to stitch down about an eighth of an inch like that. Okay, and we're going to do that on the same edge. It's basically just to hold this pleat in place. So we're going to do that whip over to the sewing machine. I'm going to slip my water because uh, I'm a bit dehydrated today. I've been up since ridiculous o'clock. Ooh, every time. Up since ridiculous o'clock. Um, I've had so many cups of tea, but oh, a bit dehydrated today. So we're going to just stitch down eighth of an inch like that and I'm just going to up my stitch length just a little bit it's just a holding stitch you don't need need anything to um actually not quite close enough there we go and you don't want it to be it, you don't want to see this later on which is why we're going really really close okay I'll show you this in just a second I'll just whip down all four and then we can take the pin out and then give it a really good press so anybody else there while I'm uh Anybody else commenting when I'm just sewing uh, these up? Yeah, Marilyn said, sorry, has it got a name? Um, what, this technique? I assume so. Um, I think it was called a folded pinwheel. So. I mean, there's hundreds of patterns out there on, on Pinterest and stuff for it. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it was called a folded pinwheel. That was like the most popular name. It's probably got lots of different names. You know what pattern writers are like. <laughs> But yes, that's what I'm calling it, a folded pinwheel. But you can do it in any sizes. You know, you don't, you could do it with charm packs, you could do it with layer cakes, you could do it with little mini charms. Ooh, they might be really cute. In fact, you could do them, you could double up, couldn't you? If you did four of the little mini charms and put it together, that would, and put four of those together, you could have like a big ones, medium ones, and little tiny ones all in the same quilt. That might be quite nice. So... Where it is? Ah, there's the starch savvy. Can you pass me that, please? I was thinking I can't find the starch savvy anywhere. Do you want me to move that over with me? So once you've just ironed those down, I don't know if you can see, hopefully. Well, if you can just come a little bit closer. I've just sewn down about an eighth of an inch away, right down that edge. Okay. So we can take the pin out. And at this point, I would give it a little bit of a, a squirt with a, the starch and... Just give that a really good press. I was thinking actually while I was sewing those, if you really wanted to, you could put some extra wadding in there. You could cut some triangles of wadding and put in there so they were really puffy. Be really nice on a cushion maybe, you know, give a real dimension to them. So in fact, depending on the time element, if we get this put together, we might try one with a, a bit of wadding in just to see what it looks like. I've not done that, so uh, we're gonna try. Try that. So that's that one, that one, done. This one, and again, just give it. Anyone else there having a chat? Um, no. As Suzanne said, good luck everyone in the advent. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah, lucky Jean this uh, today. Jean had one today. So. There we go. Right. So giving those a good. Uh, Good starch and press, and then we're going to come over to the mat again. You right, Al? Yep. You coming with me? <laughs> move stuff out the way. Just move stuff out of the way. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn them. Okay, so we're going to have our first one. That's it. Just chuck it over there, hun. Okay, first one coming out like this. So again, this is to you. This one coming up like that. So I'm just turning each one. This one then is going to be like that, and then that one is going to be facing downwards like that. Okay, we're going to stitch these two together and then stitch those and then join them. So really nice and easy, but you get this lovely, lovely sort of folded effect. But like I said, I think this is going to be really quick. So what we'll do is, we'll, because I've got more cut, we'll cut a bit of wad in and see what happens when we put some wad in. Now it is quite thick, you know, you've got quite a lot of, because it's folded, you've got quite a lot of um, you know, thickness there. So when we're doing this quarter of an inch, go, go steady, all right? So in fact probably do edge of foot not quarter of an inch and as long as you always do edge of foot it'll work um, so I'm just gonna change that 
I'm going to do edge of foot I think because you just want you want a decent seam allowance on this because it is really thick um, as I was sewing that little one up last night just to have a go at it um, you can can you hear that it's really punching through because it, there's a lot of layers there okay then we're going to sew those two together just line that up again make sure that's all nice and tucked in and go down there any any questions or comments there are? Uh, Jean said is that a new mat it is a new mat yes yeah it's a little bit too long for my table which is really annoying uh yeah it's it's hanging over about half an inch off the end of that table the other the pink one fitted perfectly but it warped so badly um i bought a new mat it is a fiskars one um it's quite nice because i got it's, you've got this big squaring up bit in the center here um you can see there on the center um, and you've got all your angles we can order these in okay we can order these in if anybody wants them you're right al yeah, just showing the just showing the but yeah a little bit off the edge yeah it does it is quite a, it is quite a big map i mean i if we weren't filming and i didn't need the space i would turn it this way but i have to try and keep in a little bit so um so yeah um i would iron these seams open okay it's gone a little bit wonky but it's fine we'll manage again then now just iron that seam open again just to reduce the bulk and stuff um, it's the mats are inch one side and centimeters the other and it's reverse it's the reversed color on the other side so it's like much it's the pale gray with dark gray markings but um obviously quilters we use the the inch side don't we so there we go this is the first one and then this is the second one again we're just going to open that seam up and iron it open it's uh, much better for the bulk and if it's still a little bit bulky give it a squirt like that can you see it's still lifting a bit give it another squirt starch savvy and another spray and it'll lie much nice much flatter and there we go so I think that's the joy of the starch isn't it you can give it a real good uh, <laughs> give it a good squirt and it works Okay, so then we're going to add these two together, and that's basically a block done, nice and nice and quick. But like I said, we'll we'll have a play with the wadding if you want to see. Do you want to see that? Should we have a go at that or not? I won't if you don't want to. But I just thought because it's such a quick block, we could maybe have a little play with that and see if it works. Any questions or comments there? Just one lining this up. Uh, not since the mat question. No. So what I've done as well is I've just like lined up those centre seams first, okay, pinned it in place, and then we're going to stitch down again, edge of foot rather than quarter of an inch. I just I just think it helped quite a lot, really. So okay, over we go. And this one. Jean says yes, please. I assume towards the wadding one. All oh, right, yeah, cool. Yeah, we might as well. Either way, I was going to say because this is such a such a quick little block. It looks way more complicated than it is. When I when I saw the picture of it, I thought, oh, that would make an interesting block of the week. Um, and then when I made one up last night, it was like, oh, well, that took like three minutes. <laughs> so yeah, really, really quick. Particularly if you use pre-cuts. <laughs> so again, I would absolutely iron this one open too. Okay. So uh, Heather said, how big is the block? So I've used five inch squares um, to actually, as my start in. So my, my background fabric and my, um, color, my pinwheel fabric were five inches. And they're coming out at, because I used edge of foot, they're coming out at nine and a half inches. That's coming up when I sit nine and a half inches. Just have a little look there. Yeah, nine and a half inches they're coming out at. But you could do them any size at all. You could start with 10 inch squares and put, you know, and do exactly the same as this and put them together and they'd come out, what, you'd, 10, yeah, they'd be like 20 inch squares. They'd be huge, really massive big blocks, which would be really interesting. But you could cut your own as well. If you don't have to use pre-cuts, you could cut your own. You could do, you know, six and a half inch squares starting size. Um, but yeah, I started at five inch. But I think that's quite a nice size for a quilt block. So I'll give that another squirt of starch savvy. And that's how quickly it comes together. And then you could just, you could pop, pop some sashing or something in between them. You can make lots of them. You know, turn them. But I think I would, I would probably alternate them maybe. Because that one's going that way at the moment. So my next one, I'd go that way. 
So let me grab a bit of wadding um, and let's have a little play with some wadding ones. Um, a little bit here cut off somewhere, maybe. No, I've got a big piece, but we'll we'll cut a bit off this, shall we? Let's see what happens if we wad that block there. Now this is a complete experiment. Not done this before. So we're goodness knows how what it's gonna turn out like. <laughs> but let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'll just line the wadding up. Like that. Uh, Oh, let's have that ruler back. So I would probably cut the wadding a little bit smaller um, because you don't want it right on the very edge because it's going to, the, the seam would be incredibly bulky. So if we cut it at four and three quarters, you see you're making me think now off the top of my head, you see I should, I should shut up, shouldn't I, and not uh, come up with random things and cut four and three quarters this way. There we go, so four and three quarter inch square, like that, and then cut it down because you only need a triangular piece, you don't need it doubled over. So cut it across the diagonal like that. Let's see what happens with that. So what we're going to do then is if we iron, take two of these and two of the background squares, like that. We'll iron these in, in half again, but then this time we'll stick the, the wadding inside. Let's see what happens. Anybody having a comment there while I'm doing this random little bit of ironing? Uh, Claire said, I really like this. I've got my Beau Papillon charm pack from the auction. Ooh, it might yeah. be perfect for this. Perfect for this. Yeah, just cut yourself some five inch background squares, maybe a lovely cream or a taupey colour or something to, to complement the Beau pa Papillon. And um, and go for it because it's really quick as well. Oh, can you see the spray anywhere? Basting spray. Oh, it's just over, it's over there. Can you grab it by the end of my sewing machine? Oh, cool. There we go. So we'll stick this up in here like this. And you can see because we cut it a little bit smaller. You've got a little bit of it, you're not going to have as much bulk, I don't think, in the. Oh, we'll wait and see. It might this might not work. <laughs> We're having a proper on the fly experiment here. Okay, so, ow! Oh, it's alright, I took the plaster off to try and let this dry out, but it's lifting and it's catching on everything. It's really painful. <laughs> okay. There we go. And then pop this one in here, like that. And again, just a little tiny squirt of basin spray just to stop it moving too much. Okay, let's try this. This might not work because it is quite thick, but um, sorry, let's just do it the uh, let's do it that way. There we go. So line that up on the bottom. We'll do it the left edge so it'd go the other way, and then fold that down. Mm, well, we might be alright. It depends on what this bulk is like, how it sews. There we go. So do that like that, and try it on this one. So is that the right side? Let's go a left hand one. And again, fold that one down. Ooh, hang on. It is a little bit more bulky, <laughs> obviously. <dull. laughs> but it, yeah, definitely a bit more bulky. So, but like I said, we have, I've never done this before. So let's give it, give it a go and see what happens. I was going to stitch down exactly like we did last time, and then try joining these two together, and see if it works. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to go up to like three and a half, I think before I stitch this one down and stitch it down again about an eighth of an inch away. So anybody comments, comment in there? Anybody having a chat? Um, Suzanne said, how about using a thin felt instead of if it's too bulky? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, you could use some felt in there. Yeah, really good idea. Yeah, it just, keep, just gives it a little bit body. I mean, although saying that, that's sewn okay. Um, I think probably I'd go four and a half and then cut the, cut it in half. I went four and three quarters. I think that would give you slightly less. It would still stay within the pinwheel, but it would give you slightly less. I don't think I went, I was a bit over ambitious with the wood insides, I think. Um, anybody else there? Um, would you use a walking foot for this, Sue asked? Um, I, 
I mean, yes, you could do. Absolutely. Some people use their walking foot all the time. You can absolutely. Um, I don't think it needs it at the moment. It's not struggling with that at the moment. Um, but if your machine is struggling to get... Mind you, it's, it's compressive because I'm using an 80-20. It's going, it's going quite nice and thin. So let's try putting these two together. So we'll give this a, give this a quick press. Like that. Yeah, it, that's that's tacked together quite nicely. That's not been too bad. But yes, you could try your walking foot. Absolutely, if you wanted to. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to put these together. So, um, like that. Like that. And actually, let's use some binding clips, I think. That might help. Rather than trying to pin it. Because it's, it is... You can see the height there that there is quite a lot there so <laughs> my machine might like this it might not we'll wait and see okay let's put some binding clips in just line that all up again yeah I would definitely cut I think if I put, was putting wadding in I rather than four and three quarters I would cut four and a half and then cut it in, up to get the triangle it would just take out that excess but it's still gonna sandwich it up nicely um, okay so and also, I'm going to go from the thinner end and work into the, um, in, sorry, I've got hiccups now from the glass of water. I'm going to work from the thinner end and go into the thicker end. Um, again, that will give the machine a little bit of a fighting chance. So let's just go to that. Because it gives it time to get up, um, sort of, what's the word? Up to speed. Up to speed, I couldn't think of word speed then. It's okay. So far, so good. And then you'd have to you'd have to try and iron this out again, which is going to be interesting because you've got that bit. See, I wouldn't want that little bit of wadding in the seam allowance on the back. So yeah, definitely cut four and a half if you're going to try with wadding. I'd I'd have a little. I'm just going to iron this from the front for now. I'd have a little experiment with this with some scrap fabrics before you started if you're going to put the wadding in. But I would, yeah, if I'm going to use five inch squares, I would make it the wadding half an inch smaller just because you've still got what, ow, that's hot now. You've still got wadding here, but that little bit there in the back, that's, that's going to be really bulky and it's not going to be pleasant for quilting either. So I would take it down to four and a half, definitely. Um, but that's, that's worked okay, actually, with that bit of wadding in it. I think that would be quite nice. That gives it, you know, if you're particularly doing cushion fronts, that just gives it a really nice, let's put it against that one. Huh, good thinking, Al. <laughs> Al's like getting the next, oh, you, it might keep you instead of Drew. <laughs> he's, uh, he might not be as talkative, but he's, he's thinking creatively for me. <laughs> so yeah, can you see, you get a little bit more dimension, I think, with that. Once you put the other one on as well. And you can see that this one's going the opposite way to this one, so I maybe do, I'd alternate them. But yeah, it's um it's lying a bit it's lying a bit puffier. I'm not sure I'd do it for a whole quilt because I think it would be really heavy and quite bulky if you were then putting wadding and backing on it. But if you were doing this, say on the front as a pocket on the front of a bag, that might be really nice with that wadding or a cushion front or something like that. Yeah, have a play with the wadding. I think that's that might work. So have a play anyway an experiment and let me know if know if you came up with any other tips because like I said I've never done that before it was just a, an idea <laughs> so any questions or comments there uh, not since the walker foot one no no well, we don't know if we're getting well we having a bit it's my phone having a funny five minutes we're we not getting any comments possibly um, it's right. Facebook's been they've again. There's been another update, and you just get used to it, and you just get all the settings right, and everything's working lovely. And then two months later, they do another update, and everything goes Pleh! again. So, um, I will read all your comments later on, though. Okay, I do go back on and, and check through all the comments. So, uh, so um, I'm not ignoring anybody. <laughs> but yeah, cool. That's it. That's a little folded pinwheel. Hopefully, you liked that. Um, I think they're quite cute and quick as well really quick you saw how quick that was what was about eight nine minutes you know if you've got pre-cuts brilliant um i'm gonna love you and leave you because um uh, i've got to get ready for a zoom class starting at two o'clock i didn't plan my days very well this week <laughs> um so i'm just gonna go and get all that set up we're gonna do the folded star cushion which is lush i love it. it's one of my favorite classes i think this is class number 17 or 18 we're about to start so um we've done this a lot now <laughs> um 
but Sarah will be back tomorrow and she is doing fabric snowflakes it's really interesting it's yeah I've been she's been showing me some bits that she's been doing it's really really interesting um yeah really different so um so she's going to be doing that tomorrow day three on the advent tomorrow as well congratulations to Jean we'll um get that prize out to you in the post and I will see you all back on Monday um I've got Thursday Friday off which I'm going to be spending decorating while they're doing the bathroom my husband and I are going to be wallpaper stripping the bedroom so much fun not <laughs> so but I will see you all on Monday guys hopefully you have a lovely lovely weekend um I'll see you soon bye